So Jess, what about things like food phobias, eating issues, body dysmorphia? What's your take on that? Do you think it's part of the, the system gone crazy when it comes to the biology and the psychology? Is it just another symptom of what's going on inside? Yeah, I really do. I really do. When I wrote my book, Raising Resilience, I, I had this epiphany, this moment when I was just like, man, we're all chasing symptoms. We're all playing whack-a-mole with the symptoms. Is it ADHD? Is it ODD? Is it allergies? Is it asthma? Is it this or is it that? And then I was like, oh my gosh, it's all the same thing. It's all eroded resilience, which is why I called the book Raising Resilience. We need to think beneath that, beneath the symptoms. The symptoms are a manifestation of an overburdened stress response, a stress load that's become too high and a stress tolerance that can't match it. So regardless of what we're dealing with symptomatically, we do the same thing. I do the same work with every one of my clients. We identify and reduce those hidden biological stressors and we nourish the heck out of their cells, you know? And sometimes we even find, you know, genetic reasons why they need more than the average person of omega fatty acids, or they need more vitamin D, or they just need more support to turn off inflammation because genetically they're just wired to upregulate inflammation once it's been triggered. So we find all of those, all of those predispositions, those vulnerabilities. And all of a sudden parents are just like, oh my God, it makes so much sense. Why my child is like this, is having explosive behavior, like reactions, overreactions, over responses, or withdrawn into, into depression. And it makes sense why, you know, I have the same tendencies and so did my mother and so did my grandmother. And it can stop now because we know so much more now about the impact of stress on the body and the impact of genetics. So much more now that we, my generation as parents can help our kids in ways that our parents could not help us because it just wasn't, it wasn't available, accessible information. So yeah, I mean, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. So what about Jess, let's say in your family, you've got a bunch of kids, one to five to six, whatever the amount, uh, and you personally are going through some issues with your own nervous system. Uh, what do you recommend on, you know, how not to transmit that to your child? How do you, how do you go around that as a parent? Well, I mean, I think in a certain sense, you will transmit some of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, don't beat yourself up over it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, a lot of it was actually transferred in utero because your nervous system, mom's nervous system carrying baby, actually there our bodies are communicating right from when they're inside of us. So I, I always say to my clients, the only reason to look back is to understand how you got here so that you can make strategic choices moving forward, right? You never want to look back and beat yourself up. That's not going to help anybody or anything right? It's just going to make you crazy, right? It's not going to be helpful, but it, it can help you understand what happens now. Like if you know that when you were pregnant, you were exceedingly stressed, you know, whatever happened in your life. And you also know you have a genetic predisposition to anxiety because, you know, mom, grandma, all the things. And then you look at your own child and you're like, oh, wow, they have a dysregulated nervous system. Maybe it's not anxiety. Maybe it's a conduct disorder, or maybe it's ADHD or whatever it might be. It might manifest in a different way because remember, we don't work at the level of symptoms. It doesn't matter what the symptom is. What's going on is underneath that. Um, so you can, you can know that you can say, oh, okay, this is what's going on. And I do find when you can do that, you can move forward because you can take a breath and you can find compassion and you can find curiosity. And those are two essential ingredients. If you are going to help your child without relying on medication, the way I teach parents to do, because I'm not a doctor, I don't even use that bucket of medication. It's not my, not my toolbox. If you're going to go this route, you have to find some compassion and you have to find some curiosity to start asking questions. What are they reflecting? What are they reacting to? What are their vulnerabilities? How can I reduce their stressors? What is stressing them out? How can I nourish their cells, their stress response system? And then you can move forward. That's huge. That's huge because judgment plays such a huge role in all of this, right? Attachment? Judgment. Oh, judgment. Yes. 
Yes. Self-judgment, judging kids. Like it it is a natural response. It is absolutely. So like take a breath again, go for that walk with nothing in your ears around trees and just, just listen to me say, well, maybe I'll be in your ears. I don't know. Listen to me say it is not your fault. It is not your fault, right? Your kids. Yes. They, they do respond and reflect to the environment that you're creating in your home, but you have a certain degree of control over that. And, um, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You just need to identify their stressors and reduce their stress load and nourish their stress response. Yeah. I imagine Jess, that's where you begin with the client. Yeah. Even before they become clients of mine, (laughs) if they're not coming into this process with some compassion and some curiosity, you know, it's going to be hard to move forward. So yeah, we we need to do that right from the very get-go. And we come back to it all the time because raising kids is not easy. It's really not. In this climate, I mean, it's become harder and harder and harder. Here's the thing. It feels so much more complicated. And I remember feeling this 14 years ago when I, when I first became a mom, I was like blindsided with how hard this was, this felt right. And I knew a lot. I'd already graduated from nutrition school and I was already a teacher. I was already a specialist in children. And I was like, man, this is tough, right? So it's hard, but the core of what children need has not changed since the beginning of time. They need nourishing food. They need hydration. They need strong connections and attachment. They need movement. They need sleep, right? It's, it's not change, but getting those things into your kids right now, that's, that's where it's, it's become harder and harder and harder, but I really like parents to just, I hope they can find some simplicity in just getting back to basics, just paring it all away, just pull away the fray get back to the business of connecting with your kids and nourishing them deeply. And you will see some results. Beautiful, beautiful words to end on. And I imagine that comes to the connection with themselves, right? First themselves put on the gas mask first, do the self-care and then, oh my gosh, I, I commend you all for raising kids. It must, it really must be the most difficult thing in the world. So my heart goes out to you. <laughs> difficult, but it's, it's so rewarding. I'm sure. They are our greatest teachers. They That's really, right. And if we choose to see them as teachers, mm-hmm. oh boy, like our self-development will just skyrocket. It is the most amazing self-development journey that Absolutely. I've ever been on. Yeah. Learning from the children and learning from the elders, right? Like it's amazing. Jess, it was so great to have you on, really was. 